Hello and welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton and welcome to a player ratings for the game yesterday at, against Luton at Kenilworth Road. Um, a, a game that was really a fun game to watch, I'd say. I'd say it was, besides the actual Everton wins, one of the more fun games is to watch in a while. And I do think it was one of those where if you're a neutral, it would have been an entertaining watch. If you're a Luton fan, probably a lot more disappointing and an Everton fan, it was a bit more... It, it, uh, it's one of those where we have now, we've secured that safe spot guaranteed to be in the Premier League again next season and I think it's one of those where it feels like the players were just out there to have fun and I think the players knew that I think um, a lot of it now was about going out and see what we can do I was honestly I was quite surprised to see basically a full strength side out there I thought we were gonna it was gonna be a lot more hopefully giving you for chance and you know hopefully we could see this in the last two games I don't know what it was I don't know if it was comments previously made by like the Luton chairman or owner for example which was why we decided to go all out. But it ended up one all in the end, and I think it's one of those where, well, we'll get into it now. Jordan Pickford in goal, a six, average, made some good saves, made some good saves, to be fair, made 6.5, 6.5. I'd say because above average, didn't have to do much in a sense of he should have made the saves he said, but there was a few Jordan Pickford-esque saves. But I think with Pickford now is... The standards are so high with him when it comes to these big game saves that it's, you know, it's really something for Pickford to get up there. Uh, moving on to Godfrey. Godfrey, I'd give a... Um, I'd give Godfrey a 7. I think if I had to really sit and, you know, break it down statistically, maybe I'd lower that. But I think Godfrey did enough to earn a 7. I think he's... Ta again, I think defensively... Great offers that real offers a real good turn of pace for someone who's meant to be a centre back, but I feel like he was he did a really good job in stopping Alfie Doughty in more open play situations. I think they still got a lot of crosses into the box, but I think Godfrey did a good job of making sure Doughty couldn't consistently pepper in the box with crosses. I think they still got the chances from set pieces, and I think they still played a lot of crosses in. But I think Godfrey did a good job on his side and tried to. Tried to keep things relatively solid in the back. Tarkovsky and Bramfoy, I think they're tied with a seven as well. A good defensive performance. Um, Bramfoy especially did a good job in winning the penalty. I don't, you know, I don't think he did anything spectacular, but of, of course he did win the penalty. Um, a solid defensive performance. I don't think any of them were at fault for the goal. I think whenever they were tested, they performed well. They pushed out well. Uh, Bramfway, again, fantastic with the ball once again, being able to you know restart play, get the ball into the midfield and really play it about. But again, I, I don't think there's much to really say about it. It's just a typical Tarkovsky and Bramfway performance at this point. Seven, just pure consistency throughout. Didn't really step a foot wrong, either of them. Ashley Young. Now, if I look over to my right here, there's the foot mob scores and they've given him a seven, but there's just no way I could ever give him a seven. I'd have to give him a six because he was clearly at fault for the Luton goal. I think he could have done better. You can make the arguments you want if they were fouled. I personally don't think it was. I just think he got bullied off the ball by Adebayo. And yeah, I think it's, it's honestly, I don't know if I can give him a six, maybe a 5.5 or a five. I'm going to say 5.5 because he was at fault for the goal. And I don't really think he did anything else that stood out to me, to be honest. Uh, I think he came, if I have a look here, he came off in the 67th minute. And yeah, I just don't think there's anything actually Young did that really stood out to me besides a negative. That might be, again, it might be a bit unbiased towards uh, Ashley Young. I feel like I'm... Don't feel like I said, would have said Ashley Cole at one of those points by accident there if I did uh, make sure to point out where in the comments. But yeah, Ashley Young, um, disappointed again. Uh, yeah, I kind of expect this from him at this point, to be honest, five and a half. Um, Jack Harrison, I'd give Jack Harrison a seven and a half. I think Harrison was probably our most dangerous player going forward in a sense. Um, I think he was constantly offering danger down that right side. He was pushing, constantly getting back. Sorry, itchy nose. Constantly getting back defensively, hustling, showed some impressive skills, played a really good cross into the box at one point. Um, I think he played two or three quite good crosses into the box, to be completely honest with you. But yeah, good performance for Harrison. Um, I think one of our better players. I think it's really hard to pick out a real standout performer in this game, if I'm being completely honest, because I just feel like it was one of those games where... We were on the back foot a lot of it, especially because of how desperate Luton were. They were pressing as well. I think more plays on the Luton side of things stood out compared to us. But I do think there was an overall more of a consistency in our performances compared to Luton. I think Luton had more standout performers, but we had a more consistent performance from the starting eleven 
overall. But yeah, Harrison, I'd give a seven and a half. I think he really impacted the game when he did get on the ball, and I think his off-ball presence really offered something. Um, Adrissa Gay, um, Adrissa Gay, seven. I think Adrissa Gay has really continued this good run of form in the end of the season. Ironically, ever since I made that video saying that I don't think we should renew Adrissa Gay's contract, he's arguably been the club's best player in these past few games. And I feel like in this Luton game, he's played much more. If if we're going to like get into the brass tacks of like the roles of players. I felt like he played much more like a deep line playmaker compared to playing that more ball winning, aggressive, constantly hustling you down. He was getting the ball short, playing it out. He was linking midfield to attack, defence to midfield. And I think he did that very well, to be honest with you. I think um, it doesn't surprise me to see our players being given a more expansive role against Luton. But I feel like Adrissa Gay took those responsibilities of being the playmaker because James Garner was quite was struggling to get into the game, really, and wasn't a really able to offer a lot because I feel like the Luton players were constantly on Garner with the presence he can offer in passing and moving the ball forward. I feel like the Luton players were more were more in tune to go and attack Garner for the press compared to someone like Adrissa Gay. They were more willing to let Adrissa Gay sit and control the tempo. I think he did that quite well. James Garner, six and a half. Um, a little bit above average, I'd say, but again, I don't think he had much to do. I don't think he did much that really stood out. Um, besides getting a yellow card, yeah, yeah, there wasn't much to do, but I think overall it was a typical Garner performance, did well. When he got the chance to move the ball forward, he did well. Um, I seem to remember him getting a chance on goal at one point as well, but I might be wrong. Again, I'm just going off memory here. Um, but yeah, six and a half, I don't really think he did much. And the same for Dwight McNeil. Um, McNeil, again, like similar to James Garner, he had his moments. He had moments where it looked like he was going to get us into the game, but I feel like Harrison was the much more impactful of the two wingers in the game, and I just don't really feel like McNeil offered much, to be honest with you. It's hard to really sit and force a conversation when I just don't think McNeil offered much in this game. And again, I do think a lot of that is because of the loot and press, that they saw McNeil as one of our danger players and as one with, that they had to get off the ball as soon as possible. And again, the same for Abdullah Dekora. Um I think I'd lower him to a six. Didn't really offer anything. Um... The same to Corey Hustle as usual, but again, nothing that really stood out. I, it was just a bang average performance, to be honest with you. And Calvert-Lewin, um, I'll give Calvert-Lewin a 7.5 as well, of course. Got the penalty, tucked it away well, um, straight down the middle. Continues his Scott Orange streak, continues his good run of form in these last few games as well. But also, again, the link-up play, being able to bring other players into the attack and playing more as that, um, you know, all-around complete forward instead of just a... Just an attacking outlook, just a target man. I feel like he really is. Um, not, I won't say he's thriving. He's having a good. He's but he's having a real impressive run of games where he's playing this more complete role of being able to bring others into the game, and he's being rewarded with it with goals now. And it, you know, the penalty I believe was from a set piece, but I do think there were a few moments where maybe we should have done better. And I think Cavalier was really impactful. I do. He got that header. And I felt like that header wasn't going to be a goal, but I think that was right at Kaminsky. And um, yeah, but again, Cavalier in seven and a half, I do think he was the more, him and Harrison was the most, were probably the most impactful of the outfield players. And then we've got the subs. Let me just have a look over here. See, uh, Gomez and Onana, uh, six. Again, I can't really think of a standout moment between them both. I don't really think they offered anything. Seamus Coleman, same thing, six. Don't really think he offered anything. Hard to really sit and point something out that like he did. That was, you know, mind blowing. That was anything special, to be honest with you. Beto, um, six. I can't remember anything Beto did really. And Chimiti's probably the only one I'd give a six and a half. He only did get like a 10, 15 minute cameo. Uh, but I think, again, he impressed in that 15 minute cameo. I think he really, a nice touch, a nice turn of pace. A real ability for someone so young to bring others into the game as well. And I feel like someone who. Maybe he gets a little more leeway because of his age and because it being, you know, again, he doesn't make many appearances for the club. I, know, I think it's one of those where, Chimiti impre I think in the short burst, he impressed the most out of the substitutes and really felt like he offered the most. Um, but yeah, I think it's, that's all my ratings. And I'm sorry if a lot of them are similar because, again, I do feel like it was a more consistent overall team performance compared to certain standouts. I think it was more, again, like I'll say again another time, more of a team performance than a individual performance without one. So it's hard to really rank certain players massively above others when I feel like everyone kind of played to a similar level in this game. But thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at Everton Newsfeed and follow me on Twitter at Callum Brandon Free. I will see you all for the next video and or live stream that I'm on. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>